Hallelujah. Are you ready for the word of God? Thank you, Jesus. You know, if we look around us today, there are so many options, so many decisions, so many things that people can choose from. Just think about food for one minute. You don't, you don't only have to choose from a menu. You first choose from a restaurant you want to go to. So many different kinds of restaurants offering so many different kinds of foods. So many decisions today that people can choose from. One thing we know for sure, a man's decisions, I mean the decisions that a man makes, determines who he is before God. God has made us to be a free moral agent. If we look at the book of Isaiah 53, the Bible says all of us have gone astray. We've all gone and taken our own way. This teaches us that there are many ways, but there's only one way. There are many truths, but there's the truth. There's many lives, but there's one life that we can live for our Lord Jesus Christ. And that life is so dear. The Bible says that Jesus Christ is the way, is the truth, and is the life. Amen? You know, in a world where we make decisions every day. I think it's sure that at least you've made one wrong decision in your life. Turn to your neighbor and say, everybody makes mistakes. <laughs> Remind them, say again, say, everybody makes mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. Amen. And God has made us in this way that we are free moral agents. You can decide yourself. Amen. In this decision-making, there's discretion. Because God has made you to be a free moral agent, you have the ability to choose between life and death. You can choose between light and darkness. You can choose between the truth and that which is false. But your decisions that you make determine who you are before God. Amen? One thing about a Christian, when a Christian makes a wrong decision, we can always run back to God. Say, God, help me. Show me the truth. Show me the way. Amen? Family, the decisions we make determine whether we are children of the Most High God or whether we are children of Satan. Are you there? Genesis chapter 3, verse 8. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? So he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid. Because I was naked, I hid myself. And he said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you that you should not eat? Then the man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I ate. And the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. <laughs> This is the story of the fall of man. They were in the garden. They were happy. Everything was going their way. I mean, it was just great. God had given them authority over every living creature, whether in the air, on ground, or in the sea. They had authority over everything. They were happy. Amen? Sounds too good to be true. And God came and gave them, God gave them one instruction. Don't eat of this tree. Amen? 
And we know that from the word of God, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, it actually represents the law. And the tree of life represents God's grace. God had said there's a way, my way, the way of grace is a better way, the way of life. Don't touch this. Don't get involved with it. Don't eat its fruit. Is it wrong to have knowledge of good and evil? No. But if you only depend upon your knowledge of good and evil to make decisions, you'll never be dependent upon God. That's why God says, don't depend upon your own decision making. Because your thoughts are not my thoughts and my ways are not your ways. There are many people that have trained themselves to make good decisions. But they don't have God in their lives. And He is life. You know the wonderful thing about this story? Even after they had messed up, after they had sinned, God came looking for them. You know what's the wonderful thing? Even here where Adam had sinned, Eve had sinned, they could still hear God's voice, God calling them, saying, where are you? Ask yourself, where do you find yourself right now? Where do you find yourself right now? In the situation, have you made some wrong decisions? Have you been moving in the wrong direction? God has not given up on you. God is still loving you. God is still pursuing you. People say, I was running after God and I found him. No. If, if we read this and we look at this, we can see clearly that man was running away from God. God was the one who came and found them. When we look at this, what is the big difference between Christians and people that are not Christians? A Christian, when he makes a mistake, he runs to God. You know, when we read this, we can see there's certain things that happened. Adam made excuses for his sin. What did he do? He blamed his wife. Since the days of the garden, the easiest thing for men is to blame their wives. Hello? Says, actually, in a certain degree, he was actually blaming God. Because he was saying, God, the woman that you gave me, she's the one who did this. Why did you give her to me if you know that she was going to do this? And by doing that, he was declaring that he's blameless. He hasn't done anything wrong. Hello? Don't poke your husband in the ribs now with your elbow. He's preaching. He's talking to you. He's talking to you. No. <laughs> Do you know what happened? She looked at her husband and she said, you know what? That's a good idea. I'm going to follow in his footsteps. No, God. The snake made me do it. <laughs> and she again removed the blame and the responsibility from herself and placed it on somebody else. And that's what we do as mankind. We make excuses when we've wronged. If they had just run to God, the matter would have been settled. But instead, they ran away. Do you know what is the result of sin? The first thing that happens, that enters into people's lives? Fear. People still today are afraid of God. Oh, look what I've done. God's going to be angry with me. Was God angry with them? God came looking for them. A matter of fact, they covered themselves with fig leaves. Isn't that right, what the Bible says? Now, if you read your Bible, you'll see the fig tree refers to the law. Fig tree refers to the law. So they tried to cover themselves with the law so that nobody would see their nakedness. What did God do? He came and He covered them with blood. 
His grace and His mercy. He says, I've got a better solution. Your solution is a temporary one. I'm offering you a permanent one, the blood of Jesus Christ. And He covered their nakedness immediately with that. Amen? And if in the garden, God was not angry with mankind when they had sinned, He came looking for them. I want to tell you, God is still pursuing you today. Amen. God is still pursuing you today to cover your nakedness, for you not to be afraid of Him. Turn to your name and say, don't be afraid of God. When the Bible talks about the fear of the Lord, it doesn't say be afraid of God. The fear of the Lord is to hate sin, the Bible teaches us. So when you fear God, you just hate sin. Because He's a holy God. He's a pure God. He's a righteous God. Amen? So when we read this story, God will minister to us in so many different ways. Have you been making excuses for the wrongs? You know, that is an attitude of a conscious sinner. He always makes excuses for his wrongs. If you ask somebody that's always lying, he'll tell you, well, you know, you know why I lie? Because when I tell the truth, it never works out for me. And they justify their lies. You can justify anything. You know, another example, some people will say, well, I cannot be successful in life because I come from a poor family. With God, all things are possible. God does not consider your past in determining your good future. This is very important to understand this. They couldn't run from God. Am I right? Because God knows where you are. You cannot run from God's presence. Turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Psalm 139. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. Do you know what? Jesus is in our hearts. When you make a mistake, don't run away from him. This is why I say stop making excuses. Stop making excuses. Don't run from God. Run to God. Turn to your neighbor and say, run to God. Run to God. Tell them, stop making excuses. Stop making excuses. Run, to God. run to God. You know, many people say, well, when I stop lying, then I'll run to God. No. Just the way you are. Come to Him. Run to Him. He is going to offer you the solution. Where can you hide from His presence? Everywhere you go, God is there. God has dealt with sin once and for all. God is not angry with you about your wrongdoings of the past. He has dealt with it once and for all in Christ Jesus. The devil wants to point you to the past the whole time, to your mistakes. Say, why would God listen to you? Look at all the wrong mistakes. How many mistakes have you made in your life? God does not consider any of those things when he looks at your future. A matter of fact, God never disconnects himself from those who make mistakes. He married you when you hated him, when you wanted nothing to do with him. He made himself one with you. Go read the book of Romans chapter 5. When we were his enemies, when we were against him and we wanted nothing to do with him, he married us. He made himself one with us. That's why God is always with us. Even Adam, when he had sinned, God came looking for him. If God is pursuing you, if God is looking for you, don't make excuses and run from God. Turn around and start running to God. You cannot get away from His presence. Amen? Everybody makes mistakes. Even when you make mistakes, God is still going to use you. Amen? Let me close. The book of James chapter 5. Just go there quickly. The truth is God has called us to be one with a difference. Be one with a difference. Don't be the one 
always uses your situation and your circumstances as an excuse. But be one with the difference. Amen? Amen. In every situation, run to God. Inquire from God. James chapter 5, verse 17. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. And he prayed earnestly that it would not rain. And it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. And he prayed again. And the heaven gave rain and the earth produced its fruits. You know what the Bible says here? He's a man with a nature like you and me. It's to remind us that he also went through the same challenges, the same difficulties that we go through in our lives. But yet he prayed. He was a man with a difference. Turn to your neighbor and say, be one with a difference. You are created to make a difference. Remember, he in his decision-making, in his prayers, was the instrument that God used to turn a whole nation back to God. He just prayed earnestly. Amen? Let me show you quickly. Let's first read it quickly. Go to verse 15. And the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins... He will be forgiven. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. Don't make excuses for your sins. When you've wronged somebody, go to them and say sorry in humility and sincerity of heart. Amen? Amen? This is what God has called us to do. Christ Jesus came to restore relationship between us and the Father. God wants restoration in families, in households, in communities, in cities, in nations to bring restoration. Amen? Amen. Let's read on. Verse 16. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective. What is effective prayer? The only prayer that's effective is prayer that's in the Spirit. Amen? Remember, everything that God created, He created by speaking words. Everything that we see today manifested from the Spirit into the natural. Through God declaring it. So in the same way, your prayers, if it's in the Spirit, you'll see the result because God is Spirit. When we worship Him, we should worship Him in Spirit and in truth. So the Bible says, The effective, fervent prayer. What is fervent? Fervent is your heartfelt prayer. Fervent prayer is that prayer that comes from your heart. When she says, I love you, is it the words that you are listening to? Or is it the heart that you want to feel? Hello? You are after a heart in the same way God is after our heart. Matter of fact, the Bible says when confession is made, we make confession with our mouths, but we believe with our hearts. Salvation is confessed with our mouths, but you believe with your heart that you are righteous. Isn't that what the Bible says? This teaches us that righteousness is not for those who confess it, but those who believe it with their hearts. Turn to your neighbor and ask him, do you believe that you are righteous? righteous. Remember the Bible says, he who knew no sin became sin so that we can be the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. So the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man. Righteousness means your position that you have in Christ Jesus. When you are in Christ Jesus, you are positioned in heavenly places. Amen. When you are positioned in heavenly places, you've accepted the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't have to make excuses for anything. You know that you can obtain, you can approach the throne of grace with all boldness and all confidence. Amen. Of a righteous man avails much. Can you see you should stop making excuses? There's no reason to make excuses in the situation that you find yourself in. Turn to God and run to God. Ask your neighbor, have you been making some wrong decisions? (laughs) 
Ask them again. Say, have you been making some wrong decisions? You know, for us to receive salvation, we have to admit that we're a sinner in need of forgiveness. But once we've accepted that, then we know that Christ has made us new. Amen? We don't have to make any more excuses then. Your divine nature, or let me rephrase it, the divine force that assists you and helps you comes from your divine nature that comes from God. So if God is your victory, God is your shield, God is the one that's going to help you, don't run from Him, run to Him. Stop making excuses. Amen. Let me close with this. Just turn a few more chapters to 1 John 1 verse 9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Family, stop making excuses. If he is your exceedingly great reward, why are you running away from your reward? Run to your reward. Amen? If you make a mistake, just say sorry. The Bible says when we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. When you are cleansed from unrighteousness, it means God has made you righteous. You're in right standing with God. This is what I mean when I say stop making excuses. Don't run away from God. Run to God. Amen. Amen.